Today we're gonna get into the latest YouTube news, including a new feature that allows you to add multiple audio tracks to W videos. Why millions of videos, including some of yours, could be losing their monetization status. And YouTube director Todd Bopre's response to rumors that YouTube thumbnails might be going away. Of course, timestamps are below. Let's begin. First up, YouTube recently announced an upcoming feature that allows you to add multiple audio tracks to dub your videos. This means you'll be able to create multi-language versions of your content and make it easier for audiences around the world to watch your videos. This feature will be powered by a new tool called Allowed from Area 120. That's Google's in-house incubator for new products. Allowed uses advances in audio separation, machine translation, and speech synthesis to reduce time-consuming and costly steps like translation video editing, and audio production. Essentially, this is a speech synthesis tool from Google that takes a video in one language and then turns it into multiple other languages. And although the dubs are done by machine learning, they're synthetic voices, they sound extremely human-like. Listen to this example of a voice synthesized from English to Spanish to Hindi. You wanna make content for people to watch no matter where they are or what language they speak. I've always wanted mi pasión por la historia, pero el idioma era una barrera. Queríamos sumar a los que no aprendieron a aprender a aprender a aprender. That's a game changer, and you can tell that this tool was built by really smart people because when you change the spoken word audio, nothing happens to the music. The music's totally fine, it stays the same, and the length of the video stays the same. I don't get that, but that's really freaking cool. This is really impressive because this is gonna allow you to tap into a whole new subscriber base, a whole new revenue opportunity. And for the creators out there who are making multiple channels in multiple different languages, you're gonna be able to save tons of cash and just consolidate everything onto one channel. Allowed is currently in its beta phase, but creators can sign up for the waitlist on Allowed's website. Next is something that creators are finding pretty upsetting. A few weeks ago, we shared this video discussing some of the strange updates to YouTube's advertiser-friendly guidelines. In that video, we talked about how YouTube was getting stricter with what kind of content they would allow to earn ad revenue, like adding a new policy prohibiting dishonest behavior, and specifically calling out creators who pretend to be retail store employees or stay in stores after business hours. However, this new rule applies to any content YouTube and advertisers believe portrays or encourages unethical behavior. You can think of all the channels this will impact. They also made updates to their inappropriate language policy, adding more restrictions on when and how much profanity you can use in your content. First, announcing that all varieties of profanity are now treated equally, meaning they are not differentiated based on levels of severity. When in the past, some mild profanity was allowed, but harsher words were not. But that's not all. It also says profanity used in the first seven seconds are used consistently throughout the video may not receive ad revenue. Not using profanity in the first seven seconds of your video, that's honestly not that big of an ask. Why is it seven seconds? Buddy, I have no idea. If you understand why it's seven seconds, let us know in the comments below, because I've been digging for answers. I have not found them yet but you can't use profanity consistently throughout a video. But what does that mean? What's consistently? Is it once every minute, twice a minute, once in a video, five times in a video? <laughs> we, we don't know. <laughs> they don't say. And many creators who previously had no issues with their content regarding profanity are now seeing their videos restricted or demonetized and will have no choice but to clean up their content if they want to continue to make money. Although there were six major updates in their new advertiser-friendly guidelines, these two, along with this last one regarding game violence, are causing the most trouble among creators. Game violence directed at a real named person are acts that are manufactured to create shocking experiences, such as brutal mass killings, implied moment of death, such as bombing of a building with people inside, may not receive ad revenue. But standard gameplay where gory images are present after the first eight seconds, non-graphic tragedies in their aftermath, such as footage of a town flooded or police seizures as part of law enforcement, may receive ad revenue. I'm not even gonna act like I fully understand what all of that means. First, what's the difference between standard gameplay and non-standard gameplay? How do you tell if something's manufactured to create shocking experiences? We need more clarity. It's important to note that these changes were applied retroactively. So if your content, you know, in the past was in good standings, 
it might not be anymore because these changes apply to the content you post in the future, but also to all the content that you posted in the past, which has been the biggest cause of debate and frustration for so many channels because they've built these catalogs of tons, millions, not millions, not millions. <laughs> I don't know any creator who has millions of videos, but you know, hundreds of videos and suddenly a lot of them, the majority of them, some of them, a little bit of them, just enough to really annoy you, got demonetized. I'll link this video at the end if you want a full breakdown of these changes so you can make sure you can avoid your content is not at risk of being demonetized. Comment below, what are your thoughts on these changes so far? Let's talk about YouTube eventually removing thumbnails. At least that's what I thought when I made this video a few weeks ago that kind of took off. If you missed it, YouTube has been experimenting with how videos get recommended to viewers. One of the biggest changes is the inline player that allows viewers to play a video directly on their homepage, foregoing the need to have to actually click through and watch it. Now that thumbnails disappear during the scroll, the choice whether or not to watch a video relies heavily on hooking the viewer within the first few seconds of your intro. Todd Bopre, the director at YouTube, even proclaimed that for many viewers, the video intro is the new thumbnail. If you read the comments on that video, many of you, like me, are rejoicing at this idea that you don't have to be graphic designers tirelessly cranking away at thumbnails that really aren't that effective. But then again, some of you are upset at this idea and you want thumbnails to stay. And I understand that too. And this video was only talking about the potential of YouTube removing thumbnails. I think I still believe will eventually come and what major creators are already optimizing for which is pretty scary, but we're already optimizing the intros. I just love packaging. Like I love titles and thumbnails, it's like a weird passion. It's like my favorite thing about creating. Mm -hmm. And so that the idea that that would be obsolete is sad, but there's always a way to, to be innovative and creative. But Todd tweeted again to bring a little bit more clarity to the situation in response to a Twitter user who was a little bit concerned. Todd says that YouTube has no plans to remove thumbnails. With that said, auto previews are used by many viewers to decide what to watch, and many videos have high abandonment in the first few seconds. Putting effort into a compelling video intro that your video delivers on is smart. So to clear everything up at this present moment, YouTube has no plans to remove thumbnails. But intros are still super important because it's what viewers use to decide whether they want to continue watching your video or abandon it. So you need to hook them in the first few seconds of your content and keep them engaged all the way into the end, like I just did with you. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Peace.